Hello, YouTube. How are we doing today? So I wanted to put together a video that shows the fastest way to unlock the SMP9. The SMP9 is absolutely one of the best sidearms in the game. In fact, it is the best sidearm that you can get pretty much until you've already completed the story. Once you roll the credits on the main story, you unlock a really good sidearm. But up until this point, the SMP9 is the best sidearm you can have. You could literally run through the entire game with this as your sidearm and never have a problem. Uh, so that's it right there, the SMP9. The only way to unlock this weapon is to kill four hordes. You get it for 10% completion on the Horde Killer storyline, and that means killing four hordes. That's the only way to get this weapon. You can purchase other versions of it from some of the merchants, but they are not at the same quality level. The only way to get this specific weapon is by killing four hordes. So, in this video, I will show you everything you need to know to get this unlocked as early as possible. Uh, in fact, I haven't even been to Tucker's camp yet, which is the second camp in the game. I haven't even been to Tucker's, and I've already got this weapon unlocked. Uh, you will need to go to the hidden loot locations. There are locations where you can find grenades, pipe bombs, attractors, things like that, already crafted and ready to use. You just grab them and go. And I will show you the four locations that I know of in the early game where you can get some of those items. Those will help you kill the hordes. And then I will also show where you can find and the easiest way to kill four early game hordes. These are hordes that are always there in the earliest hours of the game. Even when you first start the game, these are these four hordes are definitely there. So you can take them out and get your SMP9 unlocked. Now, I'm at one of the other locations where you can always find a horde in the early hours of the game. This is the Lava Arch Horde. And we're going to go ahead and use the SMP9 to take out this first horde to show you why you would even want to bother getting an SMP9 as early as possible. So let's go ahead and use it to take out this horde right here. Again, this is the Lava Arch Horde over here in the Belknap region. All right. So we'll start by putting an attractor in there to get them grouped up nicely. Once you get them grouped up, open fire with that SMP9. Here we go. That's the SMP9, folks. You can literally use this thing to just annihilate hordes. It is also extremely accurate and can be used for clearing ambush camps pretty effectively as well. Okay, so let's move on to the rest of the video, and I will show you how you can have your own SMP9. In the earliest hours of the game, you will have to come to this location. This is Crazy Willie's. Uh, you'll have to come here to try and find a part for Deacon's bike. Uh, so this is actually in the earliest hours of the game before you even have your own motorcycle to explore with. You'll come to this Crazy Willie's spot here. Um, let's see. We'll go ahead and show it on the map. Haven't unlocked much of the map yet, so it's not going to be super helpful. But this kind of shows you where we're at. We've literally just done this where you follow Leon, come over here, uh, Boozer and Deacon go through this tunnel where it shows you how to craft Molotov cocktails. And this is Crazy Willies right here. And from this location here, we can actually get, uh, we can fill up on Molotov cocktails and we can also uh, get a fully crafted attractor. It's ready to be used, no crafting required. At this location, you can also find quite a bit of kerosene. 
Uh, as a side note here, this is the best location in the game to farm kerosene. Okay, now at this point I do not bother with trying to burn out any of these nests. I save these for later. I actually don't get them until after I already have the SMP9. So we're not going to spend any time on that. We're just going to get through this mission briefly uh, so that I can show you where the fully crafted Molotov cocktail is and where the fully crafted attractor is. And also, I guess, to show that there is a good bit of uh, kerosene here for making Molotovs. These green ammo tins do not respawn, so use those sparingly only when you need them. There's another kerosene right here. You can get quite a few different items at this location. It's a good idea to fully explore this location right here, out this back window here. This is where we're going to get our first fully crafted Molotov cocktail. So here it is right here. These will actually respawn. There will always be a uh, Molotov cocktail right here, fully crafted, ready to use. Again, on the map, the Molotov cocktail is right here behind this back building here. All right. A beer bottle out here as well for crafting Molotov cocktails. In fact, yeah, we have enough now that already we're maxed out on Molotov cocktails. Okay, now we're going to move through this area completely in stealth. We're not going to engage in open combat at all. We're not going to bother with burning any of these nests at all. We're just trying to get through here so that we can get the uh, SMP-9 unlocked as early as possible. Now, right here, this building here, this is the office of the hotel. Sigils. Right here. You need here. this open drawer. There is a safe in the next room. That scrap of paper there gives you the code to the safe. You want to go through this door right here. Not the one on the left. That leads outside. You go through this first one here by the lamp. <clears throat> Right here by the lamp. As you can see, that other door there leads outside and will most likely result in open combat. There's another kerosene inside the office here. And here is your safe. And as long as you have found that scrap of paper with the code on it, you now have access to this safe and you can pick up your first fully crafted attractor. Okay, so that's all we need at this location. We'll go ahead and move on to the next spot. Okay, so the second phase comes after you have retrieved your bike. You'll have, you'll have to just go through the story mission until you get to the point where you actually have your motorcycle and you can start exploring freely. Once you have your bike, I recommend that you go to the O'Leary Mountain Safe House where Boozer sleeps at. Go up there, make an actual hard save there. Uh, not a quick save at your bike, but an actual hard save. And rest until first light. And then you're going to come down here to our first hidden loot location. I'll show the map location in just a second. The problem with this location here is there is a group of marauders waiting to ambush you. And since you're very early in the game with the weakest, crappiest items and the worst weapons, uh, it can be a difficult encounter for you. So you will have to spring their trap and launch a counter ambush. Take them out before they have an opportunity to ambush you. So let's take a look at exactly where we are at. 
the best way to find this spot is zoom in on the O'Leary Mountain safe house. Put your cursor just north of the fuel pump symbol there, and then move due east, just straight to the right. And you will come to this broken bridge right here. Now, at this broken bridge, you have the river that the bridge goes over. Follow that river north to this uh, hydroelectric power plant here. This is your actual destination, so we're going to put a marker there. That is our first hidden loot location. And you can see where I'm sitting here, right here on the edge of the trees, just before you get to the street, the bridge, and the power plant. Okay, and then if you look to your left at this spot, you can actually see a little blue car sitting over there. Okay, if you see that blue car sitting over there, there is an ambush waiting for you. Uh, you can actually see one of the marauders hiding behind the car right now. And what they do is they push that car into the street and try to block off the road. But what we're going to do is we're going to head over there and we're going to spring their trap and launch a counter ambush. Now, if you just head back this way just a little bit, you can pick up one of the best melee weapons from the early game. There's actually a mission here later, but right now we're going to use this to grab the fire axe. The fire axe, you can look at the damage and durability down there on the bottom left. Uh, it has the highest damage of any melee weapon this early in the game. So we're going to go ahead and grab this fire axe. They do respawn, and there is a second one right here in this boxcar. Just inside the boxcar at this wood pile here. So if your first one breaks, there's a second one right here. And they do respawn. There's a couple of other crafting items here, too. Okay, so let's head back up there. Now that we've got a decent melee weapon, we're going to head up here and spring this trap. Okay, so right over here is where we parked the bike. There's the bike. Parked right there beside that large boulder. Isle of Rocks, whatever. And then we're going to come over here and spring this trap. Oh, so Deacon what just you spotted you mean, them. Huh? So you just follow this dirt trail here on the low side of this hill. And the marauders are just over the top of the hill. So once you come up here to the top of this hill, we're going to use photo mode as a tactical camera. Pop into photo mode, tab over to lens, max out the field of view, and you can now use the camera as a tactical camera. I can actually see there's one marauder crouched down behind those low rocks right there. There's another one crouched down behind the rear of that vehicle. There's one crouched down behind a low rock closer to the road. And then there's one behind that tree right there in front of the car. So that's all four of them right there. We already know exactly where they're at. So you come in and take out this one here. This one at this low rock here is a sniper. They will generally have a scoped sniper rifle on them. Okay. You want to take the suppressor off of your pistol. There's no... No need to waste your suppressor since you're already in open combat here. Now we're going to try to get headshots by letting them walk into it. Just line it up. Let them walk into it. There we go. Okay. Okay. Sometimes these guys have some de decent loot on them. Ooh, and a tractor. Nice. We'll be needing that for the uh, boards that we're about to take out in a little bit. And then this sniper over here by the rocks has oh, a pipe bomb. Outstanding. Uh, that's random. You have no control over that, but go ahead and loot those people because you may actually get some decent stuff. Now, this is your first opportunity to pick up an actual scoped rifle. 
We'll definitely be taking that. This will do. Now, as a side note here, you notice that it drops your crossbow. Do not worry about that. The crossbow is always available to you at any weapons locker. So it is perfectly safe to just keep it, leave it laying there. You can always retrieve it from any weapons locker. If you decide that you would rather run with the crossbow. Personally, I prefer a scoped rifle. And that is entirely just a matter of opinion. It's That part is completely up to you. Alright, so now that we have launched a counter ambush and taken up those marauders, we're just going to go right across the street to our actual destination, our main reason for being here. This hydroelectric power plant is one of your first hidden loot locations. There is always fuel on the back of this truck, so you can keep your motorcycle fueled up. Good. Now, where we are headed is up to the highest point. We're going to climb this ladder and go all the way up to this catwalk up here. Just climb all the way up to the highest point. Take the ladder up to the catwalk. Up here, you will find an actual military-grade proximity mine. A flashbang grenade and a frag grenade. A med kit. A decent melee weapon. I prefer the fire axe because it has higher damage. Here is a pipe bomb and an attractor bomb. The attractor bombs, if you're not familiar with these, what the attractor bombs will do, they'll make a little bit of noise, which will draw freaks to that location, and then after several seconds, they will blow up. Uh, so it draws the enemies in and then blows them up. Okay, there is also a 22 repeater rifle up here, which is a little bit better than the first crappy little rifle you pick up. And there is a green ammo tin here. Be aware those green ammo tins do not respawn. So use them sparingly only when you need ammo. All of the other items up there, the uh, proximity bomb... Flashbang grenade, frag grenade, pipe bomb, and a tractor bomb. All of those items will respawn. Okay, so now that we are done here, again, let me show the area on the map. This is the hydroelectric power plant just north of this broken bridge due east of O'Leary Mountain. O'Leary Mountain Safe House. Okay, let's move on to the next location. So the next destination along the way to get your SMP9 unlocked as early as possible is this Little Bear Lake Nero checkpoint. Uh, you have to come here for a main story mission anyway. There is a main story mission quest item inside this building that you have to get. Um, there's also a Nero injector in there, which will allow you to increase your focus, stamina, or health. So I highly recommend that you go ahead and unlock this Nero checkpoint uh, while you are passing through this area. So let's go ahead and take a look at it on the map. Here it is right here, Little Bear Lake Nero Checkpoint. Uh, so you can see it is kind of in between Copeland's Camp and Crazy Willie's, which is where we started and got that uh, fully crafted Molotov cocktail and the fully crafted tractor. So this is it right here. Now, what we need to do here behind the Nero Checkpoint there is another fire axe here, right in between these buildings. So if you need another fire axe, that's a third location where they respawn. And then back here, off the back side of it, you can see this shack down here. Now, be aware, later in the game, 
a horde does spawn in that little shack, but they are not present this early in the game, so you're perfectly safe to go down there now. And just cut through the fence here. I've already got the bike parked here. There are two ways to get down there. You can go down right here, but you can only go that way on foot. I prefer to take the bike because it's faster. So you loop around back this way, just follow this little dirt trail. Try to park the bike in a way that you can make a quick getaway. And then right here inside this shack, there is another of these military grade proximity mines and another fully crafted Molotov. Now, of course, we can't pick up the Molotov because we're already full, but that's another spot where they respawn at. And there are some other crafting items here that you can make use of if you need them and another med kit. Okay. And you can see the narrow checkpoint up there at the top of the cliff up there. So that's everything from this location. Mostly it's just to get that proximity mine from the, sh from the shack there. Okay, so the next spot is the Marion Forks Tunnel Nero Checkpoint. Take a look at this location on the map. Right over here, Marion Forks Tunnel Nero Checkpoint. Now the path that we take to get here we just left the Little Bear Lake Nero checkpoint. You go west through this tunnel where Deacon and Boozer burn out nest and where the game teaches you to make Molotov cocktails for the first time. So you go through that tunnel and right before you get to Crazy Willies, you turn right and head north and take this dirt trail up past the Belknap Caves ambush camp. You're going to just drive straight past the ambush camp, follow the dirt road all the way up north until you get to the Marion Forks Tunnel Nero Checkpoint. I highly recommend that you go ahead and open up this Nero Checkpoint here, because again, you'll get a Nero Injector to increase your focus, stamina, or health. There are also healing items there that respawn, and there are also a, a handful of crafting items here that will respawn as well. So from here, where we're headed, we're going to take the road right out of the Nero Checkpoint, Be aware, this is an infestation zone, which means this area is absolutely crawling with freakers, but it is entirely possible to just run in, grab the loot, and run out. Where we're headed is this white house, the white farmhouse there with the blue trim on it. And it is located right here, just west from this Nero checkpoint. And it's right here in the middle of this cluster of houses here, this central one right here. White House, blue trim. We're just gonna run up here, hop off the bike, grab the loot, run right back out. Park the bike where you can get away quickly. Disregard all of the enemies. Come around the back side of the porch. I smell it. <sighs> Climb up this stacked up bales of hay. Come in through the window. And right here we have a proximity bomb and a tractor bomb and a proximity mine. There's also a decent little melee weapon here. I prefer the fire axe still, but that one's not bad. There is a med kit. This is your first opportunity to pick up an actual automatic rifle. Uh, it's not a very good one. It's weak, crappy, early game rifle, but it is your first chance to pick up an actual automatic rifle. So grab a little bit of ammo for it as well. Usually some crafting items on this corpse here. Marauders. Oh, God damn it, Cal. Okay. So we're done here. We're going to run right back to the bike. And then just get out of here as quickly as you can. It's not a problem. There's plenty of healing items where we're headed. So we'll go right over here. Go behind all of these buildings. Guess I'll come back later, burn out these nests. 
right here. Here's where we're at on the map. Again, here's the Nero checkpoint. Here's the farmhouses. And just a little further west is the actual town of Marion Forks. This building right here is where we're headed. This is the uh, old Marion Forks Saloon, I believe. Take a look at the name here. Old Wagon Hotel. Okay, so this is the Old Wagon Hotel. Again, we're just going to disregard and avoid all enemies if possible. Climb up on this. Climb up on the back of the patio here and come in through this first window. And now there are plenty of healing items in here. So we'll go ahead and use this med kit. There's an attractor and a frag grenade as well. There is another scoped rifle here if you haven't already picked one up. This is this is a guaranteed spawn for this scoped rifle. A little bit of ammo in here. Another flashbang grenade. Now, these doors are locked from the outside. Once you open them from the inside, you can now pass freely through these doors for the rest of the game. Like you can see, this one is locked. You cannot get in. But once they're opened from the inside, you can always go through the doors freely. So the next window, right next door. You go in through here. There is a pipe bomb here. Somebody was going to blow up the toilet, I guess. Crafting materials, crafting materials, another fully crafted Molotov, and another med kit. Okay, now, just outside of here, over here, there is another location to find fire axes. In fact, you can almost always find a fire axe somewhere on a fire truck. At this location here, there are quite a few crafting items as well. So it's a good idea to search this location for crafting items. We know there was another Molotov upstairs, so we'll go ahead and grab this Molotov. And we'll grab some ammo. Alright, so we have hit all four loot locations. We have a pretty good supply of grenades, pipe bombs, molotovs. We have some actual explosives here, proximity mine, proximity bomb. We have a tractor bomb, attractors, and flashbang grenades. We have a fully automatic rifle and a really good melee weapon. It is now time to go hunt some hordes. So you will have to kill four hordes in order to unlock the SMP-9. We're right here at a location very close to the Shadow Lake Horde. This is usually the one I do next. Now, all hordes have three possible spawn locations. They'll have a spot where they go to feed, usually some sort of mass grave somewhere. They'll have a spot where they go to get water, uh, usually a lake bed or you know lake shore, creek bed, things like that. Or they'll have a cave where they shelter during the day. The Shadow Lake Horde, their cave is right up here and under this lava arch. Their watering hole is right here on the side of this lake, and their feeding spot is right over here in this mass grave. Okay, The absolute best location to catch these guys is when they're out in the open over here by this lake. It's the absolute best spot. So what you want to do is try to get them to spawn at that lake. Do not bother with trying to pull them out of the cave. It can be done, but 
in the early game right now, we're very low on supplies. We only have the few items we've just picked up. Over here at their feeding site, they're all spread out. So it's very hard to get them grouped up to get a nice, easy kill. The best spot to get them is right here on the edge of the lake. That's what we're going to try to do. All right. Going to go ahead and make a save game. Maybe. Must be enemies aware of me somewhere. And it's the wolf. Okay. Outstanding. Now we'll try to make another save game. All right. So we're just headed over here to the lake. If we're lucky, they will spawn there. Sometimes you will see them there even during the day. And there they are. This is the spot to take them, folks. Do not bother trying to get them at any of their other spots. Just come back and forth to this lake here until you actually get them to spawn at the side of the lake. You may have to come out and do it at night. You may be able to get them there during the day, but you want to get them right here on the edge of this lake. The reason for this, it's actually really easy to take them out from these bushes right here. In these bushes, we're a little bit higher than they are. Since we have the elevation and we have stealth, we can actually start by just throwing an attractor bomb in here. They will all gather up around that tra attractor bomb. And then after a few seconds, it will explode. And we can use a frag grenade now that they're all gathered up. Okay. Put a frag grenade right in the middle of them. And that will take out almost all of them. One attractor bomb and one frag grenade. And now there's only one left. Shadow Lake Horde. Done deal. Now another reason for taking out this horde specifically... You're already gaining trust and credits with the Hot Springs camp, which we have not even set foot in. We've also got 3% on the Horde Killer storyline, which gets us a little bit closer to unlocking our SMP-9. Then you also get bounties, which are worth trust and credits at the local camps. Okay. So that's our first Horde down. Go grab the bike and move on to the next horde. All right, so the next location along our path to get the SMP-9 unlocked is the Horse Lake Nero Checkpoint. At this Nero Checkpoint, you will also find the Death Train Horde. This is one of the first hordes that most people encounter. Uh, there's a highway that passes through here that you end up having to travel that road for dozens of early game missions. So there's a good chance you've already been through this spot. Uh, but if not, let me show you some interesting uh, elements here around this location. You have explosive barrels scattered all over the place. You have a large explosive truck. Off in the background there, we have explosive boxes. This map is entirely littered with various types of explosives that you can use to take out this horde here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take out this horde. And then while you're here, I highly recommend unlocking this Nero checkpoint as well once you've cleared the horde. So we'll take a look at it on the map in case you're not familiar with this location. Again, this is the... Horse Lake Nero Checkpoint and the Death Train Horde. Now, the path we took to get here 
We were just at the Marion Forks Tunnel checkpoint where we went to uh, the uh, saloon here that had the hidden loot location, the farmhouse that had the hidden loot location. You pass through this tunnel, head east, and you come out right here at this next narrow checkpoint and the next horde. So let's make a save game. And we'll go up here and take out this horde. One thing to be aware of, it's fairly common for some of them to fall out of that boxcar up there. So you may sometimes find enemies walking this path back up to the boxcar. Uh, it's not a big deal. You just wait until you have a moment where they're kind of spaced out and can't see you. And then you just head up here for these bushes right here. And once you get up here, we're going to use one of those proximity mines that we picked up from our loot locations. And you're going to place it on the tracks right between these two train cars. Put it right between these cross ties here. Right there. Okay. You head back over here to the bushes. There's a couple of ways to do this. Since we have... Uh, pipe bombs and grenades and stuff like that. I'm going to use one of these pipe bombs here. Actually, let's use a grenade. Yeah, definitely use a frag grenade. Put it right there in the boxcar with them. Head back to the bushes. And that grenade will take out quite a few of them, and it will also pull them out. They're going to come out here and trigger this proximity mine, which will pull the rest of them this direction. And then we're going to use an attractor. Okay. Now that should get them all moving this direction. Here we go. Get their attention. Place your attractor right there at the front tire. But then you have to break line of sight and create distance. You've got to get some distance and break line of sight. They will all go for that attractor. Now again, we're going to use photo mode as a tactical camera to check and make sure that they're all gathered up at the truck. So we can clearly see they're all bunched up right there by that front tire. Now that we've got them gathered up at the truck, let's pop the truck. Death train horde. Done deal. Run up here and grab your bounties. And the next thing to do is to unlock this narrow checkpoint right here. Okay. All right, so we're now at the third horde location. This is the White King Mine. You can actually see the mine entrance back there, uh, way off in the distance there. So let's take a look at where we are at on the map. Again, this is the White King Mine Horde. It's up here in the northwestern part of the Cascades. Now, the path you take to get here from the Horse Lake Nero checkpoint, where we just did the Death Train Horde, you're going to take the road west, and you come all the way up here, until you get to this Marion Forks Tunnel. Right before you get to the tunnel, turn right and head north. And follow this dirt trail all the way up north to this little wooden bridge right here. And you can see this is the wooden bridge we're standing at now. Now this bridge right here is a decent fallback location. If you have to, you can lead the freaks to this bridge and kind of use, uh, use it as a choke point. I'm going to try not to fall back that far. We're going to try to take them out at the mine entrance if possible. But if necessary, you can use this bridge to fall back to. I always set up a trap here. Use a proximity mine right here at the entrance of the bridge. In case we have to lead them this far. Now the best way to take out this ward. You're going to come in close. Use these bushes over here. 
it's fairly common to find a straggler either right here outside the cave, outside the mine rather, or wandering around in this tunnel entrance here. So we'll pop into photo mode and see if our straggler is in here. And if you get it just right, you can see in the first entrance of the tunnel here. I don't see anybody wandering around in there. Okay. So. Make sure we don't have a straggler out here. Looks like we're clear. So, the best way to do this one. We're going to plant another bomb outside the entrance of the mine. I will use a proximity bomb this time. Put it right here at the mouth of the mine entrance. And then we're going to use an attractor bomb. It can be difficult to place this attractor bomb correctly because of how dark it is in here. It's extremely difficult to see in here. But if you'll notice, there is a point right here where the arc changes and that tells you exactly where the next tunnel is. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come right around the corner and put the attractor bomb way back in there with the horde, and then we're going to run. We'll run right out here to these bushes over here. Okay, the attractor bomb goes off, gets their attention, pulls them out toward the entrance there. Looks like I had one on me, so all right, let's get them all grouped up at the mouth of the cave here with an attractor. Then we'll use pipe bombs for the rest of them. Okay, we've only got a few left. So let's lead them over here to our kill zone that we set up at the bridge. There we go. White King Mine Horde. Done deal. That also got us maxed out, or at least got us to level one with Copeland's Camp. Got us 8% on the Horde Killer storyline. We are now very, very close to unlocking the SMP9. Go gather up your bounties. And the thing that we'll need to do next, we're a little bit low on supplies now since we've killed three hordes. You will need to trigger a respawn of your uh, hidden loot locations. So there's some pretty good loot in here. I recommend that you come in here and pick up whatever crafting materials you need from in here. But also, after you are done picking up your bounties from this cave mine from inside the mine be aware there is also another nero injector right here inside the mine so get your crafting materials here get your bounties from here and go ahead and come back here to the rear part of the cave and pick up the uh, next nero injector and then it is necessary to trigger a respawn of the hidden loot locations To trigger a respawn of the hidden loot locations, you'll have to camp for at least four days. So I recommend coming back to the uh, Horse Lake Nero checkpoint that was right here at the Death Train Horde. Uh, since it's just right around the corner from the White King Mine that we just finished, you'll come over here to this Nero checkpoint here, sleep for two days here. And then we're going to travel back to Marion Forks in the Belknap region and sleep for two days there. That's the best way I've found to do it. You actually camp for two days in one map region, then go to a different map region, camp for two days there. And once you've done that, a full four days in two different locations, that should respawn all of the loot everywhere actually but specifically at those hidden loot locations uh and so we're just going to do this we're going to camp two days here camp two days in marion forks and then uh the loot location should be respawned where you can go back and get some more loot if the items have not respawned just camp for a couple days in another spot and that should be enough if you do two more full days that should be plenty of time to make sure everything is respawned everywhere 
Okay, so I have finished sleeping for two days at the Horse Lake Nero checkpoint in the Cascades, and I have finished sleeping for two days at the Marion Forks Tunnel checkpoint here in uh, Marion Forks in the Belknap region. So we're going to go ahead and run back up here to the hidden loot location inside the farmhouse and see if our loot has respawned. Again, just park the bike where you can get away in a hurry. Completely disregard all of these enemies here. Just run right in. Hop up on the bales of hay. Hop up on the porch. Come in through the window. And here we are. Because these items have respawned, I know that all of my other loot locations are also respawned. So I'm going to go ahead and run around and pick up some more loot. And we'll go take on that last horde. Okay, so we are now at the fourth and final location for the fourth and final horde. This is the Proxy Falls Horde. Now, at this horde, this cave here, there is a chance that there will be some human marauders down here at this little camp down here. If there are, you need to either take them out as quietly as possible or simply load an earlier save and despawn the enemies here. Because if there are human enemies down there, it's a real good chance they're going to either trigger the horde, or the horde fight will trigger the human enemies to come and investigate. So one or the other could happen. You want to go ahead and take the humans out before you start. Here is the location. Let's take a look at it on the map. We're right down here in the southeastern region of the Cascades. The best way to find this location, if you don't have the fog removed already, you should actually start from Copeland's camp. I recommend that you come to Copeland's camp, you know, after you've respawned all your loot and been back around to all of your loot locations, come to Copeland's camp here because by now you should have level one trust with Copeland's camp. Uh, and if not, then you'll at least have enough bounties that you can go ahead and put yourself over that threshold of level one so that you can buy your first couple of little bike upgrades, slap a paint job on the bike, Top off your ammo uh, and then sleep at Copeland's camp to make it first light before you come out and get this horde. Now, the way to put this horde on your map, place your cursor just north of Copeland's camp, right here, like say this river here, and then move your cursor all the way east, all the way to the right, just straight over to the right until you get to this little stone bridge right here. You can actually see this bridge even if it's still covered in fog. Uh, you can just tell there's a little bridge that runs east and west here. And that, that's where you would put your cursor, uh, put your custom waypoint right there on that little stone bridge. And then you want to come south to this little stone bridge right here where we're actually standing right now. Okay, now this bridge is a pretty good choke point uh, to take this horde out, but I prefer not to use this spot. What I prefer to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to make use of these bushes that are nearby. There's some just right down the hill right here. What we're going to do is we're going to come in here and put an attractor bomb inside the cave. We just start right here. Don't go in too deep or you'll wake up the horde, but put it off in the back of the cave as far as you can put it and then run for these bushes. The attractor bomb will get them gathered up, take a few of them out and get them roaming around. The next thing to do is put an attractor right up here just as far as you can throw it up this way while hidden in the bushes. That should bring them out so that you can use frag grenades and pipe bombs. Uh, okay, somehow I accidentally threw an attractor bomb. Try not to waste those. Let's get them grouped up again with an attractor. And then we will use a frag grenade. Be careful not to throw your last frag grenade. 
There we go. Proxy Fall Horde. Done deal. Now, I say be careful not to throw your last frag grenade because whenever you throw the last item in a stack, Deacon will stand up for a second and quite often that will get you spotted. Okay, so here we go. Horde Killer. 10%. This is the whole point of this entire video here is to reach 10% on the Horde Killer storyline as early as possible so that you can unlock the SMP9. This is the best sidearm in the game until you have actually beat the game. Once you complete the story and roll the credits on the main story, you unlock a new sidearm that's pretty good, but it literally until you have beat the game, this is the best sidearm that you can possibly get. This weapon will outclass every single item that is available at the early point in the game. Until about the midpoint in the game, this weapon will outclass everything else. Grab your bounties. And then we're going to head back to Copeland's camp so that we can equip the SMP9 and take a look at the stats. Okay, so now we're at the merchant at Copeland's camp, and we're going to go ahead and go into the merchant's menu here. We're going to the locker and you? take a look at the SMP9. It shows we've unlocked new items for sidearms. We have now unlocked the SMP9. And look at the difference in stats compared to this crappy little starting pistol that you start off with. The damage is much higher. The accuracy is even higher. The rate of fire is literally maxed out. And the magazine size is 30 rounds compared to 10 rounds in your starting pistol. And once you kill a few more hordes, you get a magazine upgrade for this SMP9 that maxes out the magazine at 50 rounds in every magazine. It also has an extremely fast reload speed. So let's go ahead and equip this SMP9. Do not fill up ammo there. Go into supplies and fill ammo from there. Is that all you need? Because that will actually fill your magazine also. Nice. Good choice. Okay. All right. Now we have the SMP9. Let's go take a look at it. I got it. Give me a this little bad boy right here. This is the SMP9, and it is the most powerful sidearm that you can have in the game, literally until you have beat the game. There's nothing else that can touch this. Uh, all of those bike chase missions where you have to chase somebody down on the bike and shoot at them from the bike, uh, shooting at animals that run up beside you while you're on the bike, all of that stuff right there. Every bit of that gets much easier when you have the SMP9. So I hope you found this video useful. Uh, I'll catch y'all next time. Later.